You know, we're here today to start, talk about a motion, a motion that commits to another study. And I think when we look at the reality of seniors across this country, what we know is the bar of dignity for so many seniors has been lowered yet again. And I always use the bar of dignity as my reference point because I fundamentally believe that all Canadians should be treated with dignity. They should be able to feel that they can take care of themselves, that when they go out and they need essential things, they can get those things. So I agree with this motion. I, I do agree with it. You know, I think it's important that seniors should be treated with dignity, that they shouldn't be overwhelmed with financial worry, that seniors shouldn't be worried about the fact that their retirement savings may run out. And I think that it's important that seniors should be able to live independently in their homes. Those are all important things. But I will say this, Mr. Speaker, I also believe that there are a lot of shelves in this place filled with reports about how that is true and what next steps we need to take to make that happen. And so here we are, we have a non-binding motion that is going to maybe result in a study so that there's yet another report on a shelf somewhere talking about what seniors fundamentally need in our country. And I just don't know how long seniors want to wait to have these things addressed. You know, earlier today I met with the single seniors for tax fairness and I, I really appreciated my time uh, with, with them talking about how the realities of our systems really benefit se seniors who are married or in relationships and that there's this huge growing gap for single seniors who have to look after themselves on their own, largely women. Uh, largely, you know, women who have maybe worked great jobs where they have a great income or have worked jobs that are low income. To me, both of those are incredibly valuable and should be honored and respected. But at the end of the day, they're the exact stakeholder group that are worried if they're going to be able to live with dignity for the last years of their life, if they're going to be able to pay for those essential things that they need. So, you know, I remember several years ago when we did a, a pretty substantive study on a national senior strategy. I still think it's unbelievable that we don't have a framework in this country that says, hey, we have a large population of people who are aging, and because of that we should probably have a plan federally about how we're going to work with that, how we're going to work with provinces and territories in a meaningful way to make sure that none of the seniors across this country get left behind. And unfortunately, COVID showed us. It showed us that seniors are being left behind. We saw it again and again. In, in horrific ways. And this was not something that should have surprised Canadians. We've been hearing from these folks, from groups that advocate for them, that we don't have the proper infrastructure in this country. That when it comes to care facilities, we don't have the systems in place that really focus on making sure that people are cared for in a respectful way. And so we got to see it in the most horrific ways. And I don't think that this study, or this report on a shelf, would make a difference. So I'm really torn. Do I think it would be good to have more information about what we need to do better? Well, maybe. But what I'm really interested in is something that's going to actually make the action happen. That's going to say, look at, we're going to look at the reality that people are living longer, that retirement savings have to last substantively longer. We're going to look at how money can be moved around. At what age do you have to move over to a riff. Those are important things to talk about. But I also know that a lot of that work has been done. And you know, we need solutions and not studies. And I really mean that. And I mean that because I've talked to so many seniors across this country. I've talked to so many seniors in my own riding. You know, seniors that talk to me about the fact that they have to cut their medication in half, especially in the early months of the year where they haven't paid the amount, that means that they get free medication. So seniors are putting their health at risk for the first few months because they can't afford to pay what they need to pay to get the medication that they need. When we look at housing, the reality is affordable housing that is safe for seniors is getting harder and harder to find. You know, we just saw with the GIS clawback, a lot of seniors lose up to 100% of their GIS. 
And how many of those seniors actually lost their affordable housing? So they're going to get that extra money, which is okay, but they're living in a place that is far more expensive than they were before, and they simply don't have the, uh, the money to make ends meet. So when we look at these solutions, they have to make sense for seniors. And doing another study, it's like making a promise that we're going to do a study and maybe the government will do something about it this time. So I'm not persuaded that I will support this. Uh, and I hear that everybody else looks at this and thinks, oh, that's a nice uh, study, let's do that, you know, no harm done. But is there harm done? How long do seniors have to wait? So I'm really torn, Mr. Speaker, on this, because I think that we need better plans. And we need actions that are going to be taken. We need to make sure that there's support in place for people as they age, so that they can have dignity. I think of my own mother, who's in a long-term care facility. Mr. Speaker, she was a young senior and had a massive stroke. Her whole life changed in a day. And our whole family had to change to accommodate that. And I see her all the time. She has a decent pension. She was a nurse most of her life, has provided service to the communities that she served. And she struggles to make ends meet. And if she has a bad month, assisted living, right? If she has a bad month, which means she can't go downstairs, uh, and eat the food that they provide for her, she has to pay a lot of extra money to have it come into her. She doesn't have that money. So it gets harder and harder. You know, I also think about the fact that seniors are starting to lose their well-being because they can't afford to make ends meet. The impacts of your, on your health if you can't afford to make ends meet. So. You know, we look at the spectrum of seniors as they age. We know that some are doing very well. We know that some are really struggling. And we know there's a lot in the middle who sometimes have a good year and sometimes have a very bad year. And there's a lot of solutions that could be provided that would really make some meaningful changes. I think of, of a motion that I, or a bill that I brought to this house that talked about seniors who receive guaranteed income uh, every year. And we know that between 20 to 30,000 seniors every year lose their GIS for up to three or four months. Why do they lose it? Because they don't get their taxes in on time. Do they get their taxes on time? Absolutely, every year. But for many reasons, their health, their caring for a loved one and their elderly, onset of dementia, they don't get their taxes is on time and that means July 1st, they lose their GIS for up to four months. It was a simple bill that said, let's just make sure that every senior across this country who receives the guaranteed income supplement gets a year of grace to get their taxes in so that no senior has to go through months without that extra bit. And I'll never forget, you know, my first summer as a member of parliament getting that call from a lovely woman who was 84 years old who had lost her GIS the government said, yes, we're going to get that in place as soon as possible. But her landlord was like, you can't pay the rent, you got to get out. She's 84 years old. Where is she going to go? So we worked really hard to make sure that that didn't happen. But it doesn't seem right. So, you know, I want to see a bill that's going to actually take action, that's going to make sure that seniors are at the very core of it, and that we don't just have another report on a shelf somewhere telling us what we should do while seniors suffer across this country. So I regret to say that I'm not sure that I will be supporting this, that the NDP is not sure that we will be supporting this, because how many reports do we need on a shelf when we need substantive action for seniors across this country urgently now? Thank you, Mr. Speaker.